Hey my friends, it's the late Boy Scout standing here in Utah's Provo Canyon in front of Bridal Veil Falls. Now, as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm not here to talk to you about Bridal Veil Falls, but I am going to mention it here in a story in a moment. I think that's going to put things in perspective in regards to the story that we're going to talk about right now, which is those two scout leaders who toppled a boulder down in Goblin Valley State Park. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about Bridalville Falls in a moment. But first, let's bring you up to speed on that story of those two scout leaders who toppled that boulder, that hoodoo, down in Goblin Valley State Park. Now, if you've never been to Goblin Valley, here's a little footage of Goblin Valley. It's a beautiful place. Sandstone and dirt formations that were created over millions of years by wind and rain and erosion. And just an amazing, amazing scene that you can't really find anywhere else in the world. I mean, this is one of the reasons why that is a state park, why it ought to be preserved and kept safe. In the news, we discovered that two scout leaders, and apparently their troop, were down there at Goblin Valley, probably for some sort of scout campout. At some point, as evidenced in the video that these two scout leaders posted to Facebook, we see that one of the scout leaders thought it would be a good idea to topple a boulder from the top of one of these hoodoo formations. Now, according to these scout leaders, and both in the video and later in later statements, they did this for the supposed safety of other children who happened to be hiking nearby. Personally, I think their reasoning is beyond flawed. In fact, they're pretty much indefensible in what they did. They absolutely did the wrong thing by toppling that boulder. Part of the training that every scout leader goes through, and I'm speaking as a former scout leader, is the leave no trace training. The rules that scouts and scout leaders adhere to in regards to conduct in the outdoors are basically summed up by the phrase, leave no trace. When you're camping, you leave no trace that you were there. When you're hiking, you leave no trace that you were on that trail. If you're down in Goblin Valley and you're hiking around some hoodoos, you certainly don't topple a boulder on top of one of those hoodoos. This is the training that scout leaders receive, this is what they should be teaching their scouts, and this is what they should be adhering to all the time. I don't think I'm stating anything new or controversial by condemning these two scout leaders. Pretty much everybody is condemning these two scout leaders. So what's different about what I have to say, and why am I standing here in front of Bridal Veil Falls? Well, that brings me to my story about Bridal Veil Falls. It's 2013 as I shoot this video. Around 20 years ago, Bridal Veil Falls looked different than it does now. I distinctly recall meeting up with some of my bandmates at the time for band practice when one of them brought up and mentioned the fact that there had been an avalanche, a rock slide, at Bridal Veil Falls. Taking out the tram, which is out of camera, out of frame here I think, that used to go all the way up to the top of Bridal Veil Falls, and also changing the face of the falls. People were heartbroken when they heard about it. But that rock slide that changed the face of Bridal Veil Falls and altered its look forever could not be blamed on anybody. It was a natural occurrence changing something that was naturally beautiful. Bridal Veil Falls is still beautiful, and we've all gotten used to the way it looks. But at the time, we were all pretty heartbroken at how it had changed. By contrast, that rock formation that was destroyed by those two scout leaders down in Goblin Valley was not destroyed naturally. Because we have somebody to blame, we're looking at it from a very different perspective. Every comment I've read, every video I've seen, condemns those scout leaders. But isn't it possible, isn't it likely even, that that boulder would have fallen naturally over time? Isn't it possible, likely even, that many of those boulders in Goblin Valley State Park, and those hoodoos, have been knocked over naturally over time? And if it was, and if they were, it would be right to lament those changes as well. But with no one to blame, we'd probably get over it. There's a clear difference between what happened here at Bridal Veil Falls and what happened down in Goblin Valley State Park. But there's also a clear link between those two things. Nature is always changing. Our beautiful world is dynamic. It does not stay the same. So I would encourage everyone watching this to obey that rule of leave no trace. As you journey into the outdoors, be sure to leave it the same as you found it, or better. Seek to have zero impact on the places that you visit. Leave it as pristine and as beautiful as you possibly can so that the generations that follow will be able to enjoy it just as you have. But lastly, remember that regardless of everything we do to preserve it, 
nature is going to change anyway. So just enjoy it while you can. I'm the Late Boy Scout. Thanks very much for watching.